G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game spawning in up on the north side of the screen or the north side of the map we've got Snooper uh, he is going to be playing the Rus on the opposite side of the game or the map we've got Starry Sky playing the French both of these players ranked within the top 500 so relatively good players relatively strong players capable individuals and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing exactly how these two players are going to be ma matching up today for anybody unfamiliar snooper a fellow australian a fellow age of empires 3 player i'll leave a link down in the description over towards his twitch page if you're interested in seeing more australian content he plays a, a lot of different civs he plays the delhi he plays the rus i think that's it so not really a lot but if you're interested in seeing either of those civilizations make sure you check him out uh but uh, this is in the brand new patch where professional scouts has been nerfed and i think that excites me greatly because we potentially may see some counterplay finally happening or finally happening rather uh for the uh for the professional scouts now for anybody wondering exactly what's happened well professional scouts used to uh used to be able to pick up one of these deers and used to be able to run it wherever you wanted at maximum speed Whereas you can't actually do that now. You pick up one of these deer and you dawdle. You dawdle all the way back to your base uh, with that deer on your back. So that's the primary difference here. In addition to that, Snoop is also playing the Rus. And the Rus are a civilization that in the most recent patch has been nerfed out the Wazoo. Uh, so just to explain a couple of the changes. So first and foremost, you've you've got the, uh, the, the nerf to professional scouts, which is pretty big. Uh, the second thing that you've got is that your warrior monk. So the, the unique, uh, the, the unique cavalry monk that the Rus get, they are actually slower when they carry relics on their back. So right here, these bad boys, it'll go to pick the, one of those up. It'll be slower. I think it's by about 25%. Uh, so definitely no, not a nerf to sniff at. And then finally, their horse archers have been rebalanced. So they attack a little bit slower. Uh, I'm curious to see exactly how much it, it's going to impact them. But I suspect we're still going to be seeing fast castle. Um, and keep in mind that when it comes to professional scouts, you might think think that oh well you know all civilizations can make professional or research professional scouts so it, it's not a nerf for a specific civilization it's a nerf for every civilization so it doesn't really matter well yes but at the same time no and the reason why is because some civs have a proclivity to go towards professional scouts whereas others do not as an example if you're playing the delhi how do you research professional scouts well it's through the mill and of course at the same time uh through researching it at the mill uh you are going to be taking a, a very long time to do that it's pro i think it takes about four or five minutes to research professional scouts as the deli so it's just really not an option because by the time you finally research professional scouts then all of a sudden all the deer are gone whereas for a civilization like the rus which is what snoop is playing um and interestingly there's no hunting cabin coming out from snooper today what's that all about snooper um, with the the Rus, they make the hunting cabin, which as a civilization, it's obviously it's a civilization bonus. Uh, they get access to it, whereas other civs don't. They are able to make scouts, which means that because they've got more scouts out on the map, they are subsequently able uh, to take advantage of them through professional scouts. So it is definitely a targeted nerf towards some civilizations, uh, but at the same time, it does hit everybody. But there is winners and there are losers as well. Uh, now, speaking of winners and losers, up to 210 bounty at the moment for Snooper. Ideally, he'd like to be hitting that 250 mark. We'll have to see how he goes. But uh, uh, I would say that at this point, I almost don't agree with his build order just because he hasn't gone for that early hunting cabin. Uh, but he is going to be opening up with an early uh, an early uh, barracks right here. Uh, and this is something that you don't usually see uh, for the... Um, yeah, this is not something that you usually see for the Rus. Uh, so I'm curious to see exactly what he's doing. Obviously going up against the French. Uh, so probably overthinking it a little bit. Uh, typically, you want to avoid overthinking your matchups. Uh, and I, I feel like this might be the case. So we'll have to see exactly how Snooper plays it. Uh, going up against the French, School of Cavalry is going to be the option that Starry Sky goes for. Um, and by the looks of it, it kind of, to me, it looks like he's thinking about about professional scouts yet to add in that uh, that mill at this point. So may not be uh, something that he does, uh, but obviously he is able to, to drop down those scouts. At the same time, he can also queue up a Royal Knight here. And there we do see the first Royal Knight of the game coming out for Starry Sky. And uh, behind this, he is scouting out his opponent. He's looking for those, those pockets that he can hit 
those uh, those resources that he can raid. That is what he's after, uh, and he's scouting out his opponent right now. So the Golden Gate out. I don't believe he's scouted out this barracks at this point in time. You can see it right there, still sitting in the fog of war. Uh, so Starry Sky yet to have any idea about what his opponent is up to, but we could potentially see a uh, maybe some you know a, a fast rush coming out from Snoopy here. Uh, I'm curious to know exactly what we we do see, but this is definitely a deviation uh, from the standard. School of Cavalry, second night now going to be coming out. Uh, let's have a look and see whether Snoop has actually spotted this. It doesn't look like he has, so he does have scouts in the middle of the map. He did uh, open up with a, a scout from his town center, uh, but yet to actually spot this Royal Knight. So he's not too fast. He's got the the um, the spears are sitting back here, nice and safe. Uh, but uh, Starry Sky now going to be moving in, and one of the things to note is. Going up against the Rus, they are a civilization which typically is a very safe civilization. Looks like Snooper going to be moving his spears down towards this... I don't actually know where Snooper is moving his, his spears. Why is he taking his spears down here? What's he doing with that? I don't know what Snooper's doing. Uh, professional scouts now coming in for Snooper. Uh, so a little bit delayed there. Uh, going to be going to the Wooden Fortress. But one of the things to note about the Rus is they are typically a very difficult civilization to raid. And this is part of the reason why. All the food sits under the town center. All of the wood sits under the wooden fortress. So how do you even get in there? The wooden fortress holds eight villages. So you've got six out here. They can all get inside there. So it, it's a civilization that's very, very difficult to raid. But now Snooper going to be heading out towards the berries. Doesn't have enough wood to drop down another hunting cabin. So instead, just going to be heading out there. Going to be doing some long distance mining. Slowly but steadily going to be bringing in these uh, these deer carcasses. And doesn't it look beautiful watching these deer carcasses come in so slow? Uh, because this is a nerf in a number of different ways. But now we've got those pork chops out. Snooper looking to pick those bad boys up heading out towards this next hunt and you can actually see the spears sitting out here he's actually anticipating that starry sky was going to be going for professional scouts himself uh, so behind this we'll take a look and indeed we actually see the mill drop down but only going for the wheelbarrow technology not looking to pick up professional scouts himself looking to do a bit of damage here snooper does actually spot a wolf out the back of his base but he tries to lure it and the knights just absolutely one shot it a knight going to be able to get through here as well and some damage coming onto those villagers but unfortunately it looks like the villagers do get inside the safety of the wooden fortress without too many of a hassle and uh, now those spears going to be looking to chase away the uh, the royal knights towards the north of the base back towards the uh, the french players base starry sky let's have a look and see where he's up to he's got some pretty nice macro going on down here two villages on stone to me indicates that he is going to be thinking about a town center eventually uh, but uh, an outpost coming down right now uh, so a little bit of a cheeky uh, attempt right here at some cheese i guess you could call it cheese i don't know if cheese is really the right term for an outpost this this late in the game but uh it definitely yeah, look, we'll, we'll call it cheese. We'll say it's a little bit of a, a, a cheesy move. Uh, but uh, that villager going to manage to get away with two health on it and uh, does cancel the outpost, falls back and says, you know what, I'm not going to bother investing in that and uh, instead looks to turn his attention to another place. But uh, now behind this, dropping down the blacksmith, also going for the archery range. So looking to play this one out in age two, has got plenty of resources in the bank, could actually think about going up to the third age. We'll have a quick look and see what upgrades he's actually got. So no specialized pick at the moment, no double broad axe research. Does have that wheelbarrow technology that has come through. We'll check in on his opponent and see exactly what snoop has got, re got uh, so far. No double broad axe, but does have that professional scouts coming through. So... That, uh, that, to me, indicates that uh, players are definitely thinking about staying uh, in the second age, with the exception of Snooper, who's obviously clawing closer and closer to that third age. Um, very interesting to me that he actually opened with this barracks, because I have got a feeling that you would be in a very difficult spot uh, as the French trying to raid up against the uh, up against the Rus like this. I just don't think there's any real way that you could you could come out ahead. And speaking of coming out ahead, it looks like uh, looks like a couple of these spears did get actually taken down by the two royal knights in the middle of the map. But uh, yeah, if there is a wooden fortress that is on your wood line, you can keep eight villagers out here completely safe. They they will never be harmed at all. I mean, if you're that concerned about it, you can also just put up a little wall segment like this, another little wall segment over here, just on the edges. That will both provide line of sight and will also prevent the pathing of those units through. I think the big thing for Snooper is he was worried about losing his hunts. And you can see at the moment, he's, got, he's slowly but steadily gathering up these hunts. But the big thing for me is he doesn't have enough scouts. He doesn't have nearly enough scouts ideally i'd love to see the scout numbers up around that six seven mark and eventually from there climbing even further uh just so that you can pick up the entire 
the entire uh, deer hunt, the deer fleet. I'm, I'm, I don't even know what I'm thinking right now. The, the, you guys know what I mean, right? Like the, the herd, the entire herd of deer. But uh, Abbey of the Trinity now up. Warrior Monk in queue. Uh, Snooper looking to pick up some of those relics. We'll take a look at the relic balance and see how it is on the map. So we've got two relics close to Snooper, two relics close to his opponent, Starry Sky. And where's that fifth relic? There should be a fifth relic. Here it is up towards the north. So in the middle, uh, when it comes to the sacred sites, relatively balanced here. Uh, both players have pretty good access to the sacred sites with the exception of this one, which is kind of hidden around the back. But overall, a pretty balanced map. So I think both players would be happy with that if they, uh, if they look back on it. But uh, now behind this, Starry Sky... Beginning to add more and more outposts. He's very committed to this outpost play. And I gotta say, I agree with it. I, I do like that perspective. Also gonna be adding in more defensive outposts for himself and another outpost over on the gold mine. So he is really looking to line, and, line of sight this bad boy up. Men at arms now coming out for Snooper. What a play. I did not see that coming. I did think we were gonna see horse archers, but it seems like men at arms are gonna be the choice of unit here. And Snooper now looking to put out some damage. The Rus, men at arms coming out. Now keep in mind, these guys don't get men at arms earlier, which means that they don't have to upgrade them. So if you think about like the English as an example, they get their men at arms in age one. That means they have to upgrade them from age one to age two, and then when they get to age three, upgrade them again. The Rus, on the other hand, don't have to do that at all. They just get stock standard men at arms, and they're gonna get absolutely great trades here. Snooper not even losing a men at arm yet, and at the same time taking out plenty of royal knights. So doing a really decent job there. Uh, behind this, still got the, that triple barracks that's come up. So able to use that initial barracks really, really well. So we did see him put that down. We sort of scratched our head a little bit, but at the same time, he's managed to use it, managed to utilize it, and a great job by him. Another outpost coming down at the front of the base here for Starry Sky. He's looking to age up, going up with the Guild Hall. He's got about 11 villages on that bad boy, uh, but uh, plenty of units inside this outpost. Going to be able to allow it to fire off these arrows, but not a lot of damage coming out onto the men at arms. These guys have got a lot of uh, armor which prevents that from happening. But now up towards the north, uh, he has been... Uh, oh, you can actually see right there, the Warrior Monk has been nerfed. It is a lot slower. We just saw it very, very um, shortly, how, how slow it was going. 1.22 movement speed. That is so slow. That That is... I think it's technically slower. It, what's a minute? Um, 1.12? Yeah, 1.12. So a spear is 1.25. So a spearman can actually capture, catch them. Uh, men at arms won't be able to catch them, but uh, Royal Knight's getting in some pretty decent shots here. The spear's going to be coming over and greeting them. All the archers are going to be falling out of that tower. They're going to be trying their best, but unfortunately, having to fall back now. Sacred Sight getting captured up towards the north. So going to be getting that, begin getting that slow trickle of gold coming through for him. But now those men at arms looking to dish out some damage uh, as they fall underneath the town center and the first of the villagers begins getting targeted. Uh, no textiles coming through just yet. Uh, this uh, Warrior Monk slowly starting to move back now. And look how slow this bad boy is going. Oh, my Lord. See, it's still, it's a little bit faster than what the scouts are going. But I tell you what, this is still pretty good. I'm very happy with this change. I think this is 100% the correct change. Great job to the devs for this change. It is 100% on point. Uh, but uh, now Arbolatrie coming out for Starry Sky. He is looking to try and transition into a bit more of a crossbow base force. You can see he's got the, the double Arbolatrie out. 10 idols at the moment for him. So he's, he's feeling the, the wrath of Snooper right now. Chiss is not the only one. But... Uh, at the same time, we'll check back in with his base, see what he's up to. This outpost, nothing ever really came from it. Behind this, looks like a monastery going to get added as well. Third, is that the second or the third relic that's getting picked up right there? It is the, that's the fourth relic that is getting picked up right there. So plenty of, uh, of relics already. And uh, it is uh, Starry Sky uh, now who is uh, continuing to add farms around the town center. Having a bit of a tough time, I would say. Definitely feeling a bit outmatched when it comes to Snooper. Obviously, when it comes to these two guys, Snooper, uh, a little bit more higher ranked than Starry Sky. But at the same time, once you're, you know, when you're at this level, the difference between ranks isn't really that that big of a deal. But uh, now it looks like uh, Starry Sky going to be able to hold off and managing to get a charge off. But I think for me, the big question is, how does Starry Sky hold on to a potential Men at Arm and um, mangonel push, which is exactly what's happening. So you see the Siege Workshop coming down now, and I think this is really what, what is so difficult to hold as the French in this situation, because you know that it's coming, but at the same time, you can't really make Springles, because if you do, they're just going to get run down by the Men-at-Arms. And so the two units defend themselves very, very well. Uh, so 
that is a uh, it's a difficult situation for Starry Sky to be in. He's obviously added the second town center. We'll do a quick stock take and see how he's doing. 48 villages at the moment for him. Compare that over to Snooper, who sits on 41. So he's got that advantage of seven. But the difference here is that the relic count. So we've got four relics now coming in for Snooper. Uh, there is a fifth relic down here towards the south. Boar going to get murdered. So Snooper finally uh, reaching that next bounty level. He's up to 310. So did just cross that threshold. Um, but could potentially look to grab this second boar uh, just a little bit closer to his base. That, that fourth relic coming in uh, is running out towards that fifth relic. I don't... Has he scattered it? He has indeed scouted it, so he's going to be heading out there. Uh, going to be grabbing out the sacred sites as well, but yeah, at, at this point in time, I, I would say that Snooper is quite a fair bit ahead. We'll check in with the scores and see what uh, what the game thinks, and it actually says Starry Sky is slightly ahead by about 100 points at this point in time. But uh, you really got to scratch your head and say, well, how is he going to be able to deal with with this uh, this timing push that is inevitably going to be coming in? Snooper potentially losing the sacred site up towards the north whilst capturing the sacred site down towards the south as well. But uh, now we'll take a look over at Starry Sky's perspective. He is adding in more outposts. So this is going to be the second outpost on a gold mine that he adds. He's got plenty of, uh, of resources back here. He's got the double mill in. And I got to say, I love the, the outpost coverage that he's got. It's such a smart move against a civilization like the Rus, which loves to build those cavalry units. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, but uh, now that outpost is going to be coming up. Siege Workshop going to be coming down as well. Uh, so he is anticipating that there will be mangonels. But my main concern for him is where is the military right now? He's got 14 military units. They're on the front line. He's got a fair bit of uh, obliterate. But uh, realistically, you, you've got to be very concerned for him just because of the mangonels that could potentially uh, come in and, and do quite a bit of damage. So we'll have to watch out. We'll have to wait. We'll have to see as uh, it looks like this sacred site is getting contested. But... Uh, Snooper going to be able to chase away, and now that first Manganel is rolling out. Snooper on the on the, uh, on the front foot, definitely. Adding in more barracks here as well. We'll take a look at his production and see what it is. So he's sitting at, on four barracks uh, at this point in time. Uh, it's not enough scouts added for me. I would have loved to have seen seven scouts coming out. Uh, would have been able to, to bring in all these hunts as well. Uh, and that would have given him a whole lot more food. Yet to transition over to farms, but he's going to need to do it very, very shortly. Because uh, that looks like it might be the last deer carcass that is uh, on the back of a scout. But uh, now going to be adding in some spears as well. Veteran spearmen is going to be what he chooses to go up with. Mangadel shots happening. Uh, and that's what makes it so difficult to deal with. Uh, so I would expect that we've got a Springwood coming out very shortly uh, from Starry Sky. As soon as he can afford it, he's going to be uh, looking to get one out. But then once again, it comes back into th this sort of counter system. And, uh, and then it makes it even more difficult because these men at arms are going to be able to run in. Mangadel shot. Oh my lord, it's absolutely terrible. And uh, slowly but steadily, he whittles away. And... Uh, Rus looking like they're in a very good spot here. Starry Sky on the back foot, 100%. And uh, it really feels like at this point in time, the nail is getting put in the coffin. Behind this, we've got ourselves a little bit of a battle that's happening. The men-at-arms are, are trying their best to repel the Royal Knights. The Arbolatria moving forward and uh, still taking heavy losses from these mangonels. So much damage getting pumped out onto those bad boys and uh, really needing a Springwood yesterday. Finally, that Springwood is coming out, but he did engage a little bit too early. So ideally, what he wanted to do, lose this infrastructure on the front. It's okay. If this infrastructure dies, that's okay. You cannot lose your mass. But still, we see Starry Sky fighting on, yet to actually get that upgrade. So there is an upgrade that he could potentially be getting here. Gambesons. So it increases the armor of his uh, Ablutrier by five. So it's very, very nice against these this unit composition. But uh, ideally, I'd love to see uh, that Springwood coming out. Um, has that uh, relic been taken? That relic is still back there. Uh, so ideally, once again, there we go. We, we see that this uh, Springwood very, very short for this, or very, very uh, quickly gets taken down. Uh, so w one of the ways that he could have defended it um, would have been through using his Springwood plus a Monk that was holding the relic. And then that would have prevented any of those units from coming in too close. And then that would have forced back the attack. But now that Manganel slowly but steadily going to be getting sieged down by the veteran Royal Knight. Doesn't look like we've got any animation cancelling, but the Manganel probably going to be going down here. Indeed it does. And the, the Royal Knight loses its life as well. Second Springwood going to be coming out. Hopefully he doesn't get picked off by Snooper. Uh, but uh, he is in the base of his opponent and he is causing a bit of a havoc, a bit of havoc at this point. As he continues to flood in units, we see another Manganel coming across the map. Ideally, at this point, I'd love to see a Ram come in for Snooper as he drops a second, a third town center. Snooper going big right now. Uh, yet to actually get Siege Engineering, um, but uh, a battering Ram would definitely be of assistance here. Uh, that would enable him to continue having that steady siege at the front because the Manganel, while it can siege, 
it's not as much damage as you you would like to see. Ideally, you'd love to see big damage coming out, uh, and you're only going to get that with either bombard cannons or with uh, with the rams. I guess you could also go the trebuchet, but look, it's 2022. We don't really build trebuchets anymore. But uh, th it looks like um, the uh, the the technology that was being researched at the blacksmith wasn't successful. Uh, at the same time, we've got a keep that's now coming up for Starry Sky, and he is holding on for dear life. Player score still looking relatively even. Uh, when it comes to income, let's have a look at the stock take. 71 villagers for Starry Sky. He's holding on versus the 55 for Snooper. So 16 villagers ahead, but keep in mind, Snooper does obviously have the two sacred sites. He's looking to secure the third sacred site. Also got four relics in the bag. The fifth relic back here, he hasn't actually found it out. Doesn't know where it is. It probably just assumes that his enemy has taken it for now. But uh, now it looks like he is moving out towards the, the west side. Uh, I'm curious if he's actually aware of this uh, this keep. I suspect he's probably not. Uh, but now going to be moving out. And uh, and we fall into a little bit of a lull. Um, more stone being gathered. But uh, at, at this point in time, it definitely seems like Starry Sky has got a, a quite a decent uh, economic... Uh, backing behind him. My main concern is that when it comes to his composition, that's where he's going to have difficulty. Guildhall on gold. And now a little bit of an attack up towards the north. Villagers got to be careful here. One villager gets taken out. The remaining villagers on very low health. But uh, that, that uh, keep does reveal itself. And now Snooper is aware that his opponent is indeed looking to... Uh, looking to hold on and potentially play a little bit more defensive. So I like the fact that he's got the Springles here underneath the keep. And Boiling Oil is being researched as well. This is going to help him out a huge amount. I'd love to see a wall just come in at the front here, around the side even potentially. Just, I, I love a good little wall. Uh, Snooper now on the front line and uh, looking to tee off towards these units and indeed getting a great shot off. Got to be careful here, Starry Sky, as those Mangonels continue to, to bust their nut. But now Springles going to be out here as well and uh, looking to get their damage in on the Mangano. It's down to 16 health. One more shot. It's going to go down. The Royal Knights are, are going to be able to, to take it down and uh, those veteran spearmen going to be able to chase it, them away but uh, unfortunately terrible, terrible damage coming out for him. By the same time or by the same token, Snooper uh, moving around the back is Springled uh, from the keep. Looks like it might have potentially been researched. Indeed it has. So it's got the Springled emplacement on this. Uh, technologies coming in behind this. So we've got the four archery ranges as well as the double broad axe tech, which just came in. Um, and I'm curious to see in the middle of the map, we've got Arbola Trier that are pushing out. And now it looks like attention is going to be turned on towards the sacred sites and look to neutralize those before any real economic damage gets done. But uh, I think it's a pretty smart move. But a number of villagers have gone down on this backwood line. Uh, they've taken a lot of, uh, of losses. But keep in mind, he's playing French. He's not too fast. The Starry Sky on 78 villagers. Uh, compare that over towards 73 for Snooper. So Snooper pretty happy behind this. Arbolatria managing to take out the remainder of the spears and now going to be able to force their way onto the sacred sites. There's still plenty of units out on the map looking to guard up these sacred sites, including a warrior monk that is out here. Interestingly, the warrior monk can't heal itself. It can heal every other unit, but it can't heal itself. But uh, a couple of scouts now heading around the back line for Snooper. He's just doing a little bit of friendly scouting, looking to see what's on the agenda for his opponent. Does actually spot down this fifth relic. So I'm curious to see whether he's going to be sending out his uh, his warrior monks to find these. Uh, he does have one warrior monk out on the field. I'm curious to know where the second one was. Is that it there? No, that's not it. Because he did have a second warrior monk that was out. There it is. Uh, so second warrior monk is here. So it could potentially look to pick up this, uh, this fifth and final relic. Uh, so we'll have to pay attention to that, but I mean, behind this, Snooper looking very strong. I will say that he's got a lot of his infrastructure that's down, plenty of farms. He's got 40 villagers that are farming at the moment. Uh, hasn't opted to go towards the middle of the map where these boars are, um, which is always an option. We see players like GUA uh, who will often just go for these boars in the middle of the map, whereas safer players uh, will, will tend to farm up like Snooper. Snooper is much uh, more of a safer player, uh, I would say. But now we see that the, the cleanup is beginning. Starry Sky neutralizing this sacred site down towards the east of the map. At the same time, towards the west of the map, this sacred site is also getting neutralized. So Starry Sky looking to put the damage on to Snooper. Plenty of resources stacked up for him here. If he does want to think about going to the fourth age, he's going to be able to do that. My main concern is that he's lacking a, a fair bit of military. He's got the Manganel out. He's got a couple of Springholds, Arbolatria, and uh, Veteran Royal Knights. But the composition is good. The unit numbers, not so much. I'd love to see from him maybe getting up towards those 
5, 10, 15 uh, Royal Knights and then begin to look at raiding his opponent. So typically with the composition that his opponent has gone, which is just essentially spearmen and men at arms, you're going to be able to put on a lot of hurt to him. Imagine, you know, can you imagine the damage that would happen right now if, if 10 Royal Knights ran in right here and just, you know, that's 31 villagers. Obviously they're not going to get all of them, but that's a huge bonus that uh, could potentially come out. Horse Archers now are going to be coming out for Snooper. He's looking to put on the hurt as he moves across the map. Could potentially be going out to this sacred site. Now we're starting to see those Royal Knight numbers come up a little bit higher. And that's exactly what we want uh, coming out from uh, from his opponent, Starry Sky. And Snooper begins to round the corner here. Going to be running into these Royal Knights. These Royal Knights going to be able to get on top. Let's see if they find out each other. The Horse Archers do manage to find it out. And they're going to be looking to get away from them. But uh, doing a great job of, of falling back. And those Royal Knights actually got a, a lot of armor on them. Uh, so not going to be able to take too many losses there as they do head towards the middle of the map. And now the French player, Starry Sky, is looking to put on the hurt towards Snooper. He's got that chivalry technology research, so they're going to be able to heal up nice and fine. But uh, I'm, I'm curious to see exactly what the economic numbers are like. 99 villages at the moment for Starry Sky compared to Snooper, who's on 96. So economy's very even at this point in time, uh, despite the horse archer raids that are coming in. Now, I wonder what the, the numbers are. So it says here that it's 2.5 attack speed. I don't believe it. The, these guys were bugged in the last patch, and I'm pretty sure they're probably going to be bugged in this patch. So let's count. Let's watch this guy, okay? One. Uh, we can't we can't watch them when they do that. They're gonna be standing still for us to do it. Uh, we, we will count it out though. We'll do our, our one count, one Mississippi. But uh, he is picking on villages left, right, and center. These uh, these knights are gonna be coming out and trying to make make short work of these horse archers. They do have their boyer's fortitude, which has been researched. So pretty nice job. Uh, it's probably on the blacksmith. Yeah, he's researched that boyar's fortitude. So they've got that extra health point. But uh, I'd love to see a couple more scouts out from him just to sort of help him out with that composition. Now running some horse archers into the front line here. Probably not the best choice right there, Snooper, as the rest of his army does come out to try and uh, help him out. But going to be losing the majority of these horse archers back here. We can watch and try and count. One shot comes off. It, it's so hard to see. It's very difficult to see. We're probably going to have to wait for the, the official testing to come through. But now at the same time on the front line, Manganel firing off at the same time as the Springled. Looking to get some damage out. We've got a, a very fast keep that is being dropped down here as well from Starry Sky. And players are definitely looking to, to make... Uh, make their, their moment, I, I think is probably the best way to say it, or, or, or to, to have their moment in the middle here, as Starry Sky looks like he's probably going to get cleaned up, as these horse archers together with the men at arms are doing absolute work and completely cleaning this up. This is something that I talked about earlier. I love his composition. Just the numbers were very, very they, they were difficult. They were difficult. There weren't enough numbers. But uh, we need to see a lot more. I, it, at this point, I would even just be saying, just go Royal Knights with Mangonels. I think that's a great combo. So that is, that's what I'd like to see. But uh, we're going to continue paying attention to these horse archers because with their claimed 2.5 attack speed, uh, we need to start throwing out those questions as, as to whether we should reduce that to three seconds of attack speed, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, because uh, it, it, it doesn't seem accurate. But now it looks like we've got ourselves a little bit of a scout raid down towards the south of the map. Um, the final relic still yet to be picked up by either player. Uh, Snooper is aware of it as well. Uh, so he's got that warrior monk that still hasn't been utilized. Um, but uh, now going to be dropping down this outpost. It's probably like the 12th outpost this game coming in for Starry Sky. So definitely more of a defensive player. But uh, it is it is looking good for him. Fortified outpost coming in as well in the center of the map. So he is really, uh, he is really buckling into this position. Three battering rams, four battering rams, five battering rams coming out now for Snooper. And uh, we'll have a, a quick look at the score, see how players are doing. Still tracking very, very close to each other. 400 points difference between the two. Uh, when it comes to the economic difference between these two players, 104 versus 103, so very even. The only difference comes down to the military population. Snooper rather ahead at this point, but the I, I love seeing the veteran Royal Knights coming out. Manganel shot landing. Beautiful shot right there. Not a lot of Springwoods coming out here from Snooper as both Manganel players, or both players trade out with these Manganels. And i got to say, I absolutely love this composition. Starry Sky doing a great job. Just needs to continue, continue reinforcing at this point as more and more uh, veteran Royal Knights are coming out here. Looking to try and put on some damage onto onto these Manganels. And at this point, it really makes a lot of sense uh, for him to try and focus these down. But I think he's going to need Springwoods, if anything. And probably going to need to keep them behind his castle because this force from his opponent is significant. So Starry Sky in a bit of trouble at this point in time, I would say. Completely outnumbered. 120 population versus 163. So a 43 population difference between the two. And 
really at this point, uh, it, it's not about upgrades, it's not about economy, it's just simply about mass. Because Snoop is going to be able to retain this large mass like this, and he's going to continue pushing, and Starry Sky is going to have an issue because he can't keep reinforcing his mass because he has no mass. He's got 12 military units. And when you're funneling in units like this, it's just never going to work. Ideally, he wants to just sit back. That is the best thing he can do. Just sit back, remass. Just give up this position. This position is gone. It, th there's no discussing it at this point. Too many rams, too many units. But uh, now it looks like the, the horse archers combined with the mangonels are going to slowly siege down these uh, the remaining buildings that are left at this forward base. And it, it seemed like for a short period there that Starry Sky was slightly ahead of Snooper um, when it came to that sort of mid-game push. But now it definitely seems like Snooper has closed this out. And so I think this is attributed to a number of things. But the, the, the big thing for me is just Snooper's boom. He did a great job with the boom. So dropping down those three town centers uh, really, really helps him out. So obviously, well, not dropping down, but having three town centers really helps him out. And we've got some sneaky little outposts up on the hill here with a... a um, with, with a uh, sprinkled inside, but it's not really going to do much. It's just going to be annoying. It's going to pick off uh, occasional villagers that come out here and look for a chop or something like that, but that's about it. Nothing too exciting. Got to be careful. He's got a lot of resources in the bank, actually. He's got 5,000 resources at a bank. Compared that to Snooper, he's actually thinking about aging up Snooper. Um, so, yeah, he's got plenty of resources back there as well. Only 428 gold a minute? What's going on there? Oh, because he's lost all of his sacred sites. Look at that. All the sacred sites are gone. Um, so... He's still down those three sacred sites, uh, but at the same time, uh, he's he's having a pretty difficult job uh, pushing through here. These mangonels are going to be a, what keeps him alive. And I, honestly, at this point, I would just love to see mass mangonels from Starry Sky. But uh, Horse Archer's getting a pretty nice little split here. He's going to have a hard time holding on. Arbola Trier coming out as well. And I suspect at this point, uh, you would pretty much just call good game. The Arbola Trier at this point, they're not really going to do a lot. Um, he does have the ability to, to drop the, the Pavis. Um, but realistically, that's something that he's going to have to... If he, he can't kite if he does that. And you can see that's something that he actively wants to do. He does have the Pavis now dropped down. So he's going to be up to five ranged armor going up against these horse archers. So they're going to be taking nine damage a pop. He's got the eight uh, melee armor as well. But uh, now I'm getting out the Springholds. The Springholds aren't going to be able to do too much because they're going to be taken down very, very quickly. The men at arms as well as the spears going to be taking that out. Now we've got a forward castle. Rather, it's uh, the Spaskaya Tower uh, coming down for Snooper. Uh, so he's really looking to put the nail in the coffin and it definitely seems like that is what he's going to be doing. There are just so many units on this front line for him and uh, yeah, it is, it's It's looking very, very good for Snooper at this point. I'll say that much. More villagers coming forward. He's got 15 forward villagers. Still, this uh, outpost is slowly but steadily taking out this uh, siege workshop. You can see it's... I wonder how much damage it's actually doing. Is it doing 15 a pop? Should be doing, yeah, about 15 a pop. But uh, now taking out the majority of the production here, Snooper is for his opponent. Starry Sky going to be losing a fair bit of units here. And uh, yeah, unfortunate for him. Uh, it does look like uh, Snooper probably going to be able to pull off the victory here very shortly. That double TC build, not strong enough compared to the three TCs of Snooper. Uh, beautiful base though. Can I, just, can I just remark on that? A very lovely base. Snooper now reaching the Imperial Age. I'm curious what sort of upgrades we've got. Another keep coming down here. Scar Starry Sky really holding on and really trying to fight. You know, most people in this position would have probably tapped out, but not Starry Sky. He's looking towards the night. He's praying for a... Uh, he's wishing on a shooting star. Is that, is that what it, is that what they say? But uh, now Imperial Age reached for Snooper. We'll have a look and see what upgrades he's got coming in or what production he's got coming in. Doesn't look like any elite upgrades coming through just yet. Yeah, no elite upgrades coming through yet. No plus threes coming through just yet at this point. Uh, so a little bit low on the gold front. Then you can attribute that to just losing off these sacred sites quite routinely. But uh, now that forward keep going to be getting dropped down here as well. So Snooper really looking to put that nail in the coffin. And now sieging down the primary town center, the main town center. Uh, we've got 760 gold that is in the guild hall. So he has cashed that out relatively recently. But uh, unfortunately, it's just not going to be enough. 32 idols at this point. Villagers, you can see them healing up the mangonel, just unfortunately not having a good time and holding on with these keeps. And I, I think at this point, like, I would probably throw in the towel. I don't know about you guys. Would you throw in the towel at this point? It can always be one of those tough things. Like, uh, as I mentioned, I've been playing a lot of League of Legends recently and there are some points in the game where I'm like, I gotta throw in the towel. Like, this game's over. Like, why am I even bothering playing? But then you win those games. So it's like, you know, and I've had those games in AoE 4 as well. Like, you guys will probably remember Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, that was one of the that was one of the, the, the greatest games of all time. So it's always a possibility that you can come back. But I don't know. I just feel like at this point, like, Snoop is in his base, killing his dudes. He's got the wooden fortress coming out. 
you know, it, it's not over until it's over, but yeah, it's over. It's over. Let's have a look at the scores and see where they're at. Yeah, Snooper now pulling ahead by about uh, 3,000 score for him. Uh, dropping down just these wooden fortresses in the base of his opponent. No upgrades coming through for them just yet. Actually, getting the Arislitz upgrade, I take that back. But, uh, yeah, continuing to funnel in these units. And, yeah, I, I feel like at this point we could probably just call GG. Yeah, at this point you're probably wondering, like, has my enemy disconnected? Like, what's going on? Look at this, you got idle villagers up here. I mean, he's trying his best, I would give him that. But, he just doesn't have the production. And, I, I think, like, if, if there's one thing that we can talk about here, it is that, um, when it comes to fighting against your opponent who is doing one of these pushes, right? Like, what Snooper was doing. What's the best way that you can hold this? So, I'm talking about, like, when the Rams were up here. The best thing you can do, try and wall off... Okay, try and like get, you just want to delay your enemy. That is it. And you need to try and build up a mass, a bigger mass, another mass for yourself. That's essentially what you want to do. If your enemy goes to Imperial, that's fine. You just focus on massing. That's all you want to do. You want to get your unit numbers up. And that's something that Starry Sky really wasn't able to do. Uh, it looks like we've got elite uh, horse archers now coming out. Men at Arms also in here just doing plenty of damage we'll have a look at the village account see what starry sky's at he's at 85 villagers so he's still doing relatively well on the village account and now it looks like the warrior monk getting in on the action up here towards the north taking out these villagers before they can actually get the keep up so doing a little bit of uh, god's work over here warrior monk doing a gr or having a great job but uh yeah unfortunately on the other side I mean, he could just put one villager out over here, but there's a warrior monk that is out there as well. Um, so, unfortunately, it looks like this keep... It's going to its gonna make Doubt proud. Let's just say that much. It is going to make Lord Doubt very proud. But uh, now down to 81 villagers, 3 military population. I mean, you can see him fighting on. He's really trying. But uh, I, th I think the thing for Snooper, if he wants to win, just go straight for the landmarks. Like, that, that's the big thing. It, it, remember, if your enemy is doing this kind of thing... Just make two bombards, three bombards, and just go for these landmarks. And that's going to finish your game. So when it comes to closing out these games, you got to remember to be able to do that. Because often you will forget about that. you sort of chase them around the map. Remember in AoE 4, they do have you do have landmark victories. And that's what you're going for. You're going for a landmark victory. You want to actually kill their landmarks. So I think that's definitely the main thing that should be happening right now for Snooper. And he doesn't really seem to be doing it. Um, do we have any bombards on the way at all? There's the first bombard of the game. Uh, so this guy needed to be out as soon as he hit Imperial. That bad boy needed to be out. Another castle. Actually, it's the Red Palace. Oh, if this Red Palace gets up, he could potentially win. Oh, this... Well, not win, but like hold. You know what I mean? Like the Red Palace is absolutely crazy. But you can see the villagers are just getting taken out too quickly. I, I think, yeah, he's, he's got... It's a dream. There, there's no way that gets up. If that Red Palace got up, though... It, that, that, it could have potentially held. The Red Palace, I don't know if you guys have seen it. It absolutely fucks. I mean, once the Bombard comes, it's a different story. But, like, it, it would absolutely shred all of these units that are here. And Good Game does get called. So there you guys have it. That is the brand new Rus. Now that they've been nerfed, are they too strong? Are they not strong enough? Who knows? We'll find out. But once again, guys, make sure you check out Snooper. I'll leave a link in the description. We'll ch quickly check out the stats and just see where these guys were up to. So village account, you can see that Starry Sky just continued to bleed villages at the end of that game. Military account, he was just, he was just somewhat behind ever since this fight right here. Or uh, ever since this spike right here, rather. So, yeah, a bit of a tough one. But uh, well played over to Snoop Up, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.